Well, oh well, the day has finally come, and we probably all seen that this coming. Uh, Bobby Kodak has officially left Activision Blizzard. How convenient! After Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard, caused him to leave the company. He's still richer when he left. So, uh, I don't want to think about that. But this gets me thinking, it gets everybody thinking, what does this mean for the future of the Activision games like Call of Duty, Overwatch 2, other games beyond Activision Blizzard? It gets me really thinking, I really want to see what's going to happen in the future. I'm actually really kind of excited. I get a bad feeling that nothing's going to change. But hopefully in the near future, we get some good changes coming to Call of Duty, and especially Overwatch 2. So that's been a big little big topic coming on from this past year, and especially with the PvE being canceled and a lot of, a lot of backlash of the macro tent actions and, you know, the heroes being locked behind paywall in the battle pass. I heard that might be changing in the near future. And if it's Activision Blizzard, is this going to leave Overwatch 2 in a more positive state are we gonna see um less ma less macro chance actions are we gonna see free pve updates coming to Overwatch 2 and just less money bundles if you want to call it that way i really want to see Overwatch 2 get a big huge overhaul and what i mean by that is i want it to everything to change basically as money wise the gameplay is fine the game is fine but you know the heroes being locked behind battle passes because it's by the battle pass to access a new hero then there's not much event skins anymore there is but they like hitting behind challenges then the store then you got so many skins for like 20 bucks then and, and then everybody can put oh fortnite has skins but we know well fortnite's a pretty play game and Overwatch 2 is also free but fortnite is way different it's been out for like six to seven years now i don't want to start comparing games here but we heard a lot of bad things after bobby kodak has left activision he they've been getting a lot of ex-employees like that have been reaching out saying he threatened to, to kill a employee at activision blizzard and it's it's real i'm not gonna show it in here because i'll just be really negative but it's it's crazy after he's leaving everybody's saying all this stuff because they wouldn't be able to say this in office it's crazy guys as bobby kodak leaves microsoft and activision for good and an ex-employee describes how once he treated to have an employee killed which we talked about this earlier in the video a former employee makes allegation about kodak's previous behavior as ceo today was ceo's bobby kodak's last day at activision blizzard after almost 33 years with the company the stepping down of bobby kodak came after the microsoft acquisition of activision blizzard for 69 billion dollars which closed in october codex time at the helm has been shadowed by controversy and his departure met with a jubilant outpouring on social media this includes one story shared by a call of duty programmer who claims codex once threatened to have an employee killed as foretold in a memo to a staff earlier this december swooping leadership changes have been made at activision blizzard as the company enters 2024 as its first year under the helm of microsoft following the 69 billion equity Position. The most publicized change with the departure of Activist Blizzard as CEO and employee of 33 years, Bobby Kodak. Today marked Bobby's last day at the gaming company and his exit as prompted some former staff to share stories of his tenure. However, these aren't the heartwarming tales of chance encountered by the water cooler. Which former programmer has claimed that within a month of their start in a, on a Call of Duty project, Kodak allegedly threatened to have an employee killed, which I've already showed this picture previous in this video christina at so at christina makes this assertion while sharing news of bobby kodak's departure from activision blizzard the tweet states i worked on cod for two years as a programmer a demonware bobby Co bobby's decision made our games worse demonware a software development studio known for collaborating with activision blizzard abk on call of duty titles aid other studios within abk's christina goes into more detail about their experience working with abk and their tweet in my first month it came out he threatened to have have an employee killed in all hands that followed. No one wanted to speak first, so I demanded his firing in front of everyone it's not the first time you've heard this story and christina does later in this thread to reference the allegation as reported by business insider back in 2021 while it's not confirmed if the allegation is true kodak has faced accusations from multiple employees over the years either of a direct mistreatment or disregarding problematic workspace attitudes and swiftly set swiftly settling complaints out of court one particular instant that christina appears to be referring to is the reported voicemail 
left on an assistant cell phone in 2006, threatened to have her killed as reported by the Wall Street Journal article behind a paywall. The matter was settled out of court and activists addressed the matter following the reports stating Mr. Kodak quickly apologized 16 years ago for the obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail and he deeply regrets the exaggeration and tone in his voicemail to this day. In 2007, Kodak faced a harassment lawsuit from a flight attendant who claimed he said to their legal team, I'm going to destroy you. A spokesman for Mr. Kodak denied making such a statement. Kodak throws Overwatch under the bus. Another former Activision employee re-encountered Kodak's botched handling of Overwatch 2, which Kodak previously blamed for the company weakening share price in recent years. Andy Belford, formerly of the community team at Activision Blizzard, sounded the alarm that Overwatch 2 would be immediately reviewed bombed after hitting Steam. Overwatch 2 remains one of the most negatively reviewed games on the platform to this day, which impacts the game visibility on Steam and also led to the wave of negative press about Overwatch and Blizzard in general. So what this means is Overwatch 2 got so much hate and when it finally released on Steam, that's when all the negatives like poured in into the reviews of Overwatch 2 on Steam and it was pretty bad. So it got a lot of negative reports, a lot of thumbs down and just how, how they're making decisions at Overwatch 2 is the worst of how they're doing. So, so it says here, breaking my silence to share a fun fact when we planned Overwatch 2's Steam launch, my team warned months in advance that we we're going to be reviewed bombed. We begged for more information, more details, and more resources to help us with the anticipated influence influx, all flatly denied. The moderation of Steam was put on the community team, not a function of community at Blizzard. Despite my refusal to want to expose members of the, my team to that level of toxic content slash post when asked whose decision it was to launch a Steam on Steam with no additional of help, Bobby. Buff Ward recounted uh, how Bobby Kodak himself was happy to drop the game straight on Steam without giving the community team any form of additional support. Overwatch 2 and other Blizzard properties were objective to ways of international hatred owing to the, the collapse of Activision and publishing deals with so NetEase in China, leading to hundreds of thousands of players losing access to games like World of Warcraft, Overwatch itself. Blizzard was also based with backlash from its numerous lawsuits, but of course, it wasn't CEOs Bobby's codec who would bear the brunt of this condemnation. Belfort goes on to describe the avalanche of toxicity leveraged against his team for decisions none of them were involved in making he and many others have since moved on from Blizzard for greener pastures. A new start for Activision Blizzard under Microsoft question mark. Bobby Kodak's tenure as CEO has been marred by controversy since the investigation into Activision Blizzard workplace practices in 2018 at California's Civil Rights Department Department received a, a complaint from a former employee which began to a whirlwind of bad publicity for the company. Many places to blame direct at a Kodak door with allegations of the company and Kodak himself not taking sexual harassment, assault, and unequal pay complaints, seriously dating back to 2006. The lawsuit sparked widespread outrage from the gaming community and will forever cast a shadow over APK's history and finally came out to close on December 16th, 2023 with a 54 million settlement being paid out by Activision Blizzard. First reported by the Wall Street Journal, California Civil Rights Department was reported to have said that the statement resolves allegations of discrimination and pay disparity. And according to WSJ, Activision has said that the state has agreed to file an, an amended complaint that withdraws its 2021 claims alleging widespread and systemic workplace harassment at the company. Kodak departure from Activision Blizzard following the Microsoft acquisition has come sooner than expected. Originally, Pencil for January 2024, an internal memo to staff confirmed his last day would be December 29th, 2023, perhaps indicating a new year, new start for the company under Microsoft Wing. Let's hope that that is the case. Does this mean we will see changes to a Call of Duty skill weight matchmaking or all the bundles we see in the store? How the game is talked about for Call of Duty in a future update and Call of Duty's every year and how the third game mode is never good. Will we ever get another Vanguard type of game? which the zombies was trash and uh, there's a milk quality like it's a freaking vending machine in a dollar store. It's crazy. As good as it sounds, I want Microsoft to make good decisions on acquiring Activision overall. As good as I want to see a Watch 2 changes and Call of Duty changes and a game is beyond the, what Activision owns, I want to see good changes. And it's like, how are we going to see good changes 
or it's like are they gonna milk the game for bundles because they gotta make money somehow they can't just put no microtons actions in the game because how are they gonna make money I think just let people buy battle passes that is fine with me bundles can that's all right i think if the game is balanced and don't make new content locked behind the paywall or just extra game modes in general just make if you have the game you should not like be able to make extra purchases to access like the other half of the game and whatever it you know whatever it offers you it's it's pretty sad to see all these games going that, that route especially destiny 2 i just if you just have if you just bought destiny 2 alone well it's free to play now but if you play a free to play in the destiny 2 you pretty much are buying the full game as you're buying the expansions that's literally off topic but i just hopefully they other companies learn from what hopefully microsoft is going to do and i mean at this point i could probably say they're not going to do shit we'll see in the near future it is 2024 so hopefully we're probably going to start seeing call of Duty titles on the game pass and really start this deal rolling in and seeing it seeing it with our own eyes hopefully we make microsoft make some good decisions bobby kodak is gone microsoft owns activision this can be a huge thing at for the future of games, especially with Call of Duty betas. There's no first for PlayStation 4 anymore or 5. It's all going to be on all platforms. Which I said that for freaking years now. It should be on all platforms and it's all about the money, money, money. Yeah, so you guys already know how this is going to go down. We want good changes. We want good decisions in the company. We don't want dumb pay to win stuff. We just want the game to be balanced and fun. Be able to play anything in a game that's not stuck behind a paywall. A content action is fine. That's not going to change i don't see that happening because how else are they going to make money besides people buying battle passes and bundles and skins and weapon skins and stuff like that so yeah hope you guys really enjoy this video um i can rant about this all day and yeah hope you guys really enjoy this we got to like the video subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification to never miss a video and we are officially 100 subscribers away from 1000 yes keep them i'm saying that so if you guys really enjoy this um after hitting a thousand subscribers the grind that never stops we're uploading videos consistently uploading shorts uploading clips all over my social media accounts and the grind that never stops hope you guys enjoy i'll see you guys next time peace